Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another episode of the PLC Programming Cookbook. So today I'm going to talk about something I've already talked about in Ladder. I'm going to talk about it in text now. This is how to make a toggle. And like I mentioned in that other video, this is super important for everybody to know if you're going to be doing PLC programming, and it's also a little bit weird to think about. So if nothing else, this is a really good exercise for your logical brain and your programming mindset. So let's think about what we're trying to do here. Let's say we've got a machine with a physical button or a button on an HMI, and we want that button to toggle a state, to toggle between extend and retract on a manual function, or to toggle between manual mode and auto mode, or to toggle between any other two states. How do we do that? The way the button works is, I mean, you can push it as fast as you can and then let it go, but it's probably gonna be detected for more than one PLC scan time. Because even if you push it as fast as you possibly can, it's gonna be held down for a few milliseconds. And that's long enough for the PLC program, which actively scans through over and over and over again to see that a few times. So you can't just say, whenever that's on, change the state of the thing. Instead, we're gonna to have to do what's called a rising edge detection. We're looking for that one rising edge as the signal of the button turns from off to on, zero to one, zero volts to 24 volts, however you wanna think about it. When that contact closes exactly at that moment, we wanna detect that spot and not worry about before or after it. So we're not just watching as I click this button, is it on, we're saying, is it on and was it not on last time I looked. And I do have an example here in Ladder. This is what we went over in the other video, but this probably isn't as directly helpful as sometimes we can compare Ladder to structured text. In this case, we have to think about the structured text a little bit different. So I brought this here for reference, but I'm not actually gonna look at it very much. Cause like I say, uh, we're, we're just different in this case. We're doing the same logic in a different way. So, like I say, if I click this button, I wanna say, is the button on? And was it not on last time I looked? I, I think this is actually easier to understand in structured text than in ladder. If the button is on, because this is a Boolean variable, uh, that means it's already true or false. I don't have to say if button equals true. I can just say if button. If button and not button last. This is the programming way of saying exactly what I said. If the button is on now and it wasn't on last time I looked at it. And button last is another variable that I made. And I put it right here. It's another Boolean. And at the end of every scan here, we're just setting button last equals button. So that's how we know that's what it was last time we looked because we saved it. We're remembering it. If you haven't seen it before, this concept of an if statement is very, very common in structured text and really in almost all text-based languages. Super common concept, good to know. Um, the, the whole if structure starts with an if and ends with an end if, and it's saying if this condition is true. Again, this is a Boolean thing. It's looking for a true or a false. So if we want to look for something equals a number, well, we have to say something equals that number and that comes back with a true, it is equal, or a false, it's not equal. Again, in this case, I'm doing all Boolean logic here anyway, so it's just a true or a false anyway. So if that's true, then do this thing. This thing, everything that's between the if and the end if is gonna be done now. In this case, we just have the one line and this is toggling the light. The light should equal whatever it's not right now. Light equals not light. I don't know if I mentioned this in any other videos, but this is another thing that I found a little bit strange just based on my time with other text-based languages. This is the assignment operator in structured text. This is the standard that's defined by IEC 611.31. So any environment that implements structured text uses this same standard. And really all of this will look very, very similar across environments colon equals just means take this thing on the right side and stick it into the thing on the left side. So that's it. Like I say, I think this is a lot easier to understand in structured text. I think it's a little closer to English and the way we would like to think about it. 
the only hurdle here, aside from maybe not being comfortable with text-based languages, is just that it's kind of different from this ladder logic way of thinking about it. So um, again, a good exercise for your, your programming and logical brain. Try to wrap your head around this. So let's demo it quick. I'm going to log in. And it looks like we're running. Everything's false right now. I should be able to click this button. And look at that. The light turned on and it's staying on without me click, clicking or holding the button. If I click and hold the button, which I'm doing right now, I'm holding it. Notice the light went off and it's not flickering on and off. It detected that one state of that, that rising edge and then it stopped acting. This function here stopped acting. And actually, if you look at it here, we're looking for button to be true and for button last to not be true. And this is going to happen so fast you won't even see it. So that'll be true and not true for a moment. And then it'll be true and true. So this won't keep acting for a while. So I'm going to click and hold and you see true and true. It's that if statement is not operating anymore, the inside of that if statement, because the condition is no longer true. So that's it. Um, again, this is in Codasys. You can download it for free. I'm going to give you the uh, file here to download and play with it. Check the description for a link. And as always, I want to point out that I'm working in a VM here. This is how I always program my automation because it's the only way to keep everything in order. And uh, I, I go into that in great detail in another video that is on YouTube. So feel free to have a look. If you like this, if you don't like it, if you think it needs something, if you've got questions, comments, you want other things uh, to be covered, please let me know. I, I enjoy doing these things. I want them to be useful and I want you to find them useful. So let me know and I'll be able to do better and better. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.